Taking Control of Your Apple Watch with Jeff Carlson. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Coinbase. For a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, he's becoming a regular on this show. I guess it's just because he's doing that much stuff. Mr. Jeff Carlson is back. Jeff, welcome. It's great to have you back (laughs) yet again. Hi, it's great to be back again. I know we've mentioned this before, but I swear it's cyclical. Uh, I, I'm very, very quiet and working on stuff. And then a whole bunch of things just either intentionally or usually by coincidence all come out at the same time. So, uh, here we go, here I am. And then I'll probably get really dark again in, in December while I'm working on other things. (laughs) Well, I think without going into it, I think we have at least one other thing potentially on the plate, depending on when, what your schedule is. So there's a, there's a pretty good chance you'll be back, you know, in short order. Yeah. This time, though, we're going to talk about um, your, your, well, is it an update? Or I'm not even sure. Is is this an update? Take control of Apple Watch. It is, yeah. So th- this is, this is uh, the second edition of the book, and this is version 2.0 of the book. So uh, it started out as a uh, take control, um, oh my gosh, I've already forgotten what it was called. It was like a... Uh, a quick guide that that's yeah. not the right term, but anyway. Um, and, uh, and then last year we decided to revamp it, turn it into like a, a proper quote unquote, take control book. Um, and so now, uh, we've updated it again to a full 2.0 that covers watch OS eight and the series seven and basically everything that's new since last year, which, uh, spoiler alert, that turned out to be a lot more than I expected. Now, that surprises me because the the popular wisdom out there is that, hey, you got a six, you don't need the seven. You got a five, you don't need the seven. There's not that much difference. Uh, except, yeah. of course, I mean, the, the big Ballyhoo thing is the, the size of the watch. Um, so mm-hmm. you say there's, though, a lot more under the hood that we need to pay attention to. Well, there's a lot of stuff in in, in Watch OS 8 that I think, um, well, let, let me put it this way. And, and this is partly a, you know, how the sausage is made. There was a, a lot of work required to update the book. Um, and some of that is, you know, boring stuff like had to retake almost all the screenshots because the little uh, back button, the little carrot sign, um, looks different than it did in watch OS seven. So, you know, it, it's, it's like one of those little things that just made from an author's perspective, made the update take a long time, but there are just a lot of different things, a lot of, I don't know, s- small features and improvements to existing features and, you know, a few new things thrown into the book that, uh, it, it really justified saying like, this is a full 2.0 release rather than just a little bump release, which surprised me because like you said, the updates, you know, even in the hardware, um, from six to seven aren't really that major. And on a surface level, watch OS seven to watch OS eight didn't seem like that big of a deal. And yet I kept running into things, you know, they, they created, you know, a proper home app and had to write about that. There are, um, capabilities now where you can use, uh, Apple home keys or home kit keys. See, this is why it's all in the book because I don't have it on the top of my brain. (laughs) Um, but you know, you can use home keys, that work in conjunction with the wallet app on your watch and on your phone. So you can unlock your, your house doors. You can unlock your car and start your car. If you have, uh, you know, a a certain model of car, I think right now they're mostly expensive BMWs, but you know, you can do that. So things like that, that I think didn't get a whole lot of attention and people kind of said, okay, well, you know, it's a nice year over year upgrade, and I'm going through my outline. And I'm like, oh, geez, I need to mention this. And wait, they're they're doing 
uh, what with Fitness Plus? What you, you can do share play, and then you can have two people doing the same workout at the same time and compete with each other, and like you know that kind of stuff. So, okay, so I would then I want to make sure I didn't misstate something um, because okay. this is take control of Apple Watch. So mm-hmm. this is not take control of Apple Watch Seven or Apple Watch uh, or Apple Watch OS. Let me try that again. Or watch OS <laughs> eight. This is take control right. of Apple Watch, so it covers. It's not just for the new Apple Watch Seven owner that, like, I hope to soon be if mine ever gets delivered. Um, it's for <laughs> pretty much anyone that is is able to upgrade to some of the new operating systems. That there are a lot of these features, I'm sure, that are backward compatible with you know, however many versions down they're backward compatible with. Yeah, exactly. It's the it's mostly tailored to uh, what's in watch OS eight. I mean, we could sort of make all the exceptions for, well, in, in watch OS six, it did this. And then in seven, they changed this. And in a very small number of, of instances that needs explanation, but it's just the nature of books. Most everything is going to be about watch OS eight. Now what's nice about watch OS eight is it will run on anything from um, uh, series three and up. And so even if you have an older watch, even if you didn't plan on getting a series seven, all this information still applies to you. Uh, and, you know, full disclosure, I did not order a series seven because I ordered a series six last year as my, you know, my own personal watch. And the improvements in the seven were not quite enough for me to justify the expense this year. Um, also because there were things like uh, new MacBook Pros and I'm not made of money and <laughs> little things like that. Um, and so, so you know, my watch that I use personally is perfectly fine. And that's that served me really well. I went from a Series 0, the very first ones that came out, and I held on to that for quite a while and replaced it with a Series 4, which was a a magical leap in technology and then skipped the five and went to a series six. So, you know, you don't have to keep up with the, the, the current model every year. And I think especially because the series seven has some very cool things about it. It's like just a little bit larger, but mostly the screen area is bigger. Um, But it has like the same processor as the six. And so, if you are upgrading from, say, a three or a four, that's going to be a really nice jump. If you have a six, you want to get up to a seven. It's not as not as compelling. I know some people who will do it just because they want to have the latest, or they want one that's uh, stainless steel, or they want to have like an older one that they can keep on their their wrist during the night to track their sleep, so they don't have to try to recharge during the day and all those kind of things, but it's, it's, it's a good ways. I guess I've, I guess I've said it. It's, um, sort of incremental in the hardware, but Apple still does a lot in the software. And then that tracks back to older models. And if, if watch OS eight runs back the whole way to series three and mm-hmm. we're on series seven now, I mean, yeah. that's doing a really good job of taking care of those legacy people because like you said, you know, the watch, I mean, yeah, somewhere along the way we got different sensors and different things, especially for the health side of things. Um, yeah. But, you know, there's so many other things that an Apple watch can do. And Apple's done a really good job of making all those older Apple watches still able to do a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, one of the big surprises this year actually was that Apple is still selling the the Series Three, because for various reasons, I mean, it has a, a significantly smaller screen, well, significantly compared to what we have now. Uh, but I know that developers weren't really happy because they have to develop for a different size screen, and it's it's relatively underpowered compared to the the four and above, and so they're they're keeping it i think because so they can have like a, a really inexpensive entry level watch um and and so because of that 
they engineered watchOS 8 to make sure that it it goes back all that way. And I think probably because it is the inexpensive watch and it has been for the last couple of, of years, there's probably just a lot of them out there. And while Apple will happily sell you a brand new watch every time you need one, they seem to be doing a good job of recognizing that, you know, it's a watch. It's not a laptop. It's not a phone that you're going to change every couple of years. And therefore, you probably will get a, a good amount of life out of it. So the obvious question, Jeff, what features are in Watch OS 8 that we need to yeah. really pay attention to that, that make this a worthy update? Well, some of it also ties into um, iOS 15 and macOS Monterey. So, for example, um, the, the Do Not Disturb feature is now part of the larger focus feature that runs across all of the apps. And so, for example, well, and also that rolls in the, the sleep feature. So sleep is now a subset of focus and it's just a mode that says all right when i'm sleeping do this and on your other devices you can set up specific focus times uh, for example like i'm running one right now that i i think i've just called it podcast time and it just keeps notifications from me and uh, except for you know maybe like three or four people um you know my my family in case they desperately need to get a hold of me um, and you know you can set up different conditions and set um, different automations and things like that. And so that also gets worked down into the watch, so you can uh, trigger those things from the watch. And you know, you're not going to get notifications on the watch when when your focus mode is enabled. So that's that's like a big change that um, you know it's. It's larger than just, oh, here's a new feature. It's kind of a new, uh, not ecosystem, but it's it's a new umbrella that you kind of have to understand how that works. Um, what else? Uh, the, the Breathe app, for example. Um, last year, they introduced this app called Breathe, which I think a lot of people turned off because it was a little annoying. And what it would do is it would, it would pop up uh, every five hours or so and say, you know, hey, it's time to breathe. And so you want to do some just a, a, a one minute breathing exercise. And I'm, I've gone back and forth. There, there are definitely times when it's, it's nice to be able to, you know, Still and center yourself and and just have a little bit of relaxing breathing. Um, Lord knows the last couple of years have been stressful at times. And uh, but at the same time, it usually popped up when I was like in the middle of something and I was like, I can't stop now. So now uh, Apple is is expanding on that. And now the Breathe app is gone, but it's part of a, an app called Mindfulness. And Mindfulness has uh, three different parts. So there's still the breathe, um, although it doesn't pop up as much as it used to. Um, and then there's just uh, like a, a reflection. And what it does is it, it like at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, it'll pop up and it was like, do you want to spend some time reflecting on something? And it'll give you a prompt like, you know, spend a minute and just focus entirely on something that you've done today that you enjoyed or, you know, a person whose knowledge has helped you like those kind of things. It, it sounds really kind of hippy dippy, I know, but it's also part of Apple's sort of overall uh, attempts to I don't know, help people be less stressed and have them be healthier in general. And that also extends to mental health. And there are studies that say if you, you know, do a certain amount of just this sort of calm reflection or breathing exercises, it can help a lot of people in just general anxiety levels. Um, it's funny, I'm, I'm talking about this, this breathe app and I'm remembering that I need to breathe because I'm, I'm just talking, talking, talking. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you 
don't know that it's there, then suddenly you're going to get this pop up. It's like, do you want to be mindful? It's like, well, I don't know. Do I? Um, and if you have an Apple Fitness Plus subscription, then there's also like a guided meditation option that can go with that. And so, you know, your mindfulness can pop up and you can say, I am like really stressed right now. I just need five minutes of just sitting quietly and having somebody help me focus on something. And so it, it does like, like audio ones versus the, the, you know, the fitness plus um, on a, on an iPad or an Apple TV or something. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Coinbase. For a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash macvoices. Are you still not quite sure about cryptocurrency? What it is? What you can do with it? How to handle it? Do you identify as crypto curious? If you've thought about entering the world of cryptocurrency but felt a little overwhelmed, Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell simple. Coinbase makes it quick and easy to start your own portfolio and learn to trade like a pro. They can help you level up your financial portfolio by diversifying into cryptocurrency. Backed by the world's leading investors, Coinbase keeps your portfolio safe and secure while adding crypto into your mix. Not sure which cryptocurrency is right for you? Coinbase supports the most popular digital currencies on the market and makes them accessible to everyone. And they offer portfolio management and protection learning resources for those of you new to crypto, and a mobile app so you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. Get started today. For a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash macvoices. Sign up at coinbase.com slash macvoices for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash Mac Voices. Thanks to Coinbase for their support of Mac Voices. I, as, as an, just an observer of things over the last two year and a half, two years, yeah, there's, it just seems like there's been so much stress, but there's been so much of a focus on stress and de-stressing and you know, mindfulness and mental health. You know, pick, pick your phrase. They're all out there. And they all, yeah, at yeah. least in, in, in my untrained opinion, they all kind of come out to the same thing, that we need mm -hmm. to pay attention to this part of our, of our health. And, you know, if, if you're one that doesn't think you do or, or don't want to, then you can turn it off. But it yeah. also is we're putting something on our wrist to help us improve the quality of life in a lot of different ways, uh, productivity and health and, you know, activity and all of those things. So yeah, I, 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 I get it. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure it's for everybody. Just like I'm not sure meditation is for everybody, but mm -hmm. all, all there are an awful lot of studies out there saying this makes a big difference to people. So yeah, why, why wouldn't it be advantageous for Apple to put it in there to help you remember to do it? Yeah. Well, and I, I think it does a few different things. So for one, if you have no interest in this, you can turn it off and never think about it again, and that's fine. But it's it's something that is there as a possibility. And it's not like you, if you were looking for something like this, maybe you would be going out to YouTube and try to find med meditation videos or breathing exercises, or you know, you're just trying to to get a handle on general anxiety that you have about a project or something like that. And so this gives you some sort of a structure, some sort of, you know, professionally evaluated way to tap into that. And it might help you, it might not, but having it as an option is is good because it's it's also not forced on you. It's not like your phone's not going to work anymore until you do these breath, uh, these breathing exercises. Um, so, so there, there's that part of it. But I also think this really plays into Apple's push for the Apple Watch as a fitness device. Because when we first got the Apple Watch, it was very much this is a a you know a luxury timepiece. You know, you could buy like the gold and the silver. 
you know, models and, uh, you know, that was a little over the top, but I don't think Apple exactly knew what it wanted. Like it, it wanted some sort of a device that could do a lot of these things. And that was great. And then as people bought them, as millions of people bought them and the, the, um, the activity rings became really popular. I think clearly Apple said, ah, all right, here's, here's an area where we can focus and differentiate. And also because they're competing with Fitbit and other, other devices. And so having this, the mindfulness and the breathing exercises just wraps into that, that bigger picture of this is a device that can be for your, your whole health. And it just kind of, I don't know, it, it makes things more positive if you want to do it. So speaking of this, um, one of the, the, the key things about the Apple watch is, uh, fitness plus. So if you have a fitness plus subscription, it's not just that, that you can do these, these guided meditations, you start a fitness plus workout on your, your computer or your Apple TV or your phone or your iPad. And it's talking to the watch very specifically and it's sending data back and forth. And so as you perform one of these exercises and that can be, you know, really high intensity workouts or, uh, you know, cycling or core uh, exercises, um, or even just, you know, yoga and meditation things, uh, you get to see on screen a, how it's affecting your activity rings. You see your heart rate and the time elapsed and it, it will help you, you know, if you're doing something that's, that's very, um, you know, uh, vigorous and you know, all right, I need to keep my heart rate above a hundred beats per minute. You can just see that right away. And this, this interaction makes it really cool because you're, you're getting data, it's recording your workouts. And, you know, for a lot of people who are really into that, that's something that they can track and they can, you know, make sure that they're, they're getting the, the cardiovascular workout that they're looking for. Um, full, <laughs> full disclosure, when I was writing this section and testing it out, uh, I was actually sitting in front of my computer, drinking a glass of wine, running a workout. Um, and, I wanted to to put a, a screenshot of basically me drinking a glass of wine, uh, but the phone won't take a screenshot of of the Apple Fitness video. I think because it's video, it just comes up as black. So you can also start a workout and sit on your couch and drink wine. <laughs> I didn't I didn't get very much credit for it, but yeah, well, there's a lot of effort involved in you know going from you know. It, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Repetitive motion. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Working my triceps and yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> we're going to get emails. Um, <laughs> we are. Jeff, I, I'm curious to see what your thought is on this. Um, I feel like the Apple watch when it first came out, the first few iterations were sort of like the early iPhone. I, in, from an app perspective, that you had the mm -hmm. Apple apps and you had then the little one trick ponies that, you know, could do just one thing. And that was pretty much it. Now the iPhone and along with the iPad, the, the apps are really matured. And okay. So we're talking about a watch here. All right. You can't, there's only so much you can do with a watch. That yeah. said though, I get the impression that a lot of the third party apps that are out there now um, are starting to really take advantage of some of the, some some of the what the Apple can the Apple Watch can do, mm -hmm. and to go back to something you said earlier, not just as an Apple Watch alone on my wrist when I'm out moving, but as part of the entire Apple ecosystem, is that a fair observation? You think? Yeah, I think I think the the third party app situation didn't blow up as much as Apple thought that it would once it. It created like in WatchOS seven last year. They they created an app store. You can you know buy Apple Watch apps from the watch and not have your phone involved at all. Um, and I, I think that was going to spur more uh, more development. And th th there are certainly a lot of things out there. There's some games. Um, I think in in one of the screenshots that I use. Um, there's like a, a, a Galaga like, you know, space invaders kind of game that you can, you can download. So like 
there's some clever things being done. For the most part, I think things are still tied to iPhone apps and still, uh, you know, the, the app is still regarded as this, this satellite device, which I don't think is a bad thing. Uh, you know, there was this expectation that, well, because it has, uh, you know, an Apple processor, it's a, it, it, it's a full blown arm processor. Um, it basically runs a version of iOS, um, watch OS sort of came from there that, you know, there could be all sorts of different apps and experiences, but I think real world has sort of taught us that people don't necessarily want to sit and read web pages on their watch. They don't necessarily want to do complicated things because it is a watch. And so the developers who have figured out ways to make an accessory work with the phone um, or, I mean, one good example would be uh, like audio and podcast apps. Um, with the phones, sorry, with the watches now, um, if you get a cellular watch, you can go out, you don't even need your phone and you can, you know, stream audio, you can stream podcasts. Um, it, you have those kind of controls and that kind of ability without having to lug around your phone. In the early days, everything was basically running on the phone and then it would just give you a little window to your, your phone app on the watch. So it's, it's come away since then. Jeff will be back in the next edition of Mac Voices to talk more about the Apple Watch and remind you of some of the things that it can do that you may have forgotten about. Until then, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.